There we go. Hi, it's Mary Beth Decker with sacredgrove.com. Uh, I was waiting for you to light up. I, all I could see is darkness. So um, doing another live reading from the book, Peace and Passing, Comfort for Loving Humans. Here we go. During animal transitions. Uh, it was an, it was an animal, Amazon bestseller in pet loss and grief. And so I thought that it would um, be a good way to share a little bit with you this way. And it's, so maybe you, you'll pick up the book and find some peace as we talk. Okay. Alrighty. So let's see. Let's see if I can get a little more. One of my blogs start out, it was a dark and stormy night. And so with this, with this lighting, I feel like that's what we're doing, but we're not. So let's get into it. The chapter we're reading from is called Finding a Spiritual Approach to Losing Our Animals. And um, this, is the, this is part three, which is finding peace when, when we decide to euthanize. So let me, let me get going and reading this. Since we have the option to euthanize our animals, we have the added responsibility or burden of deciding whether to let them go. It helps if we can know their desires, if they're ready to move on. As your animal's guardian, you may have to decide to let them go, but that's okay. When they joined your family, they gave you a spiritual medical power of attorney so you can make medical decisions for them. We know they can't say to the veterinarian, yes, I'll go through that procedure. I have the stamina and desire to live or I'm tired, no more procedures. Let's move on to a peace, peaceful ending. Instead, on a spiritual level, they look to you to make the right decision for them. Okay. So we notice their lives, their quality of life. What fun things can they still do? Are they eating and drinking? Can they walk, run, or play? How, mu how much physical discomfort are they in? Can you make it better through medication, medical intuition, or energy healing sessions, animal communication sessions, herbs, acupuncture, massage? I've used all this on my animals because it works. So that's the thing to think about. Still at some point, you realize more medical interaction isn't helping and their physical condition is worsening. It's tough when you sense they don't realize the gravity of their situation. So you may need to explain to them that they're if you decide to euthanize and you know it's happening, this is what I'm talking about. You, you'll need to explain to them how they might start feeling even worse if you don't release them from their body. That's because you want to spare them that discomfort. You just get the feeling that it's not going to get better. Again, I strongly believe our animals consented to you being their guardians and caretakers. They chose you as much as you chose them. They said, you're my human. Take care of me the best you can. I know you'll make the right decision. I trust you. Your decisions, your decisions don't have to be perfect. There's rarely a straight path from taking care of a healthy soul to caretaking a soul whose body, whose, is weak, whose body is weakening. Instead of perfection, you're called to make each decision with pure love. In pure love, ask, what's best for my animal right, right now? And what can I do to acknowledge my feelings so I can make the best decision for them? There's, there's uh, resources in the book, and you, you can probably Google this. There's a, a, an excellent checklist called How Do I Know It's Time, When It's Time, from the Ohio State University's Veterinary Medical Center. 
It may help you assess your animal's quality of life from a from more grounded position because I, I've used it. And um, there's tons of emotions here and having something that you can do a checklist, it's helpful. Most important here though, release your need to make the perfect transition, the perfect decision. Trust that your love was the best um, B A L M, the best support for your animal's transition. They knew they were and are still loved. And if it works for you, believe that Creator helps smooth the transition, and there are friends and family on the other side helping too. I'm totally into that. I've I've felt it. I've seen it. It's good stuff. Okay, this I wanted to talk about something that I've noticed that has happened. And my friend Pete Johnson, uh, who I interviewed about um, communicating telepathic communication at the end of life, because he does that with humans. He's, I'm going to share some of the things that he, he has to say about this time. So let's realize that animals sometimes check life on the other side. So some, some animals know there's another realm, an afterlife for them to continue their existence. That can make the transition easier for them when they go. I mean, for me, it's like uh, checking out where you're going to live next. You know, go visit it. I've met cats and dogs who were checking out the other side before they left. I've met them. And I have a little dog that's doing it too. One cat would disappear outside for a longer period of time than usual because she was able to sense the other side when she was outside. That's, that's what I received. She would always return home, but this was her way of preparing herself for the transition. Other cats and dogs are in such a deep, almost trance-like sleep that their people are afraid they died. Their humans softly touch them to see if they respond, and then they realize they're still breathing. I would imagine their human just gave a heavy sigh of relief. I know I, I have. The information I've received is their animals are visiting that world they're going to be when their bodies give out. Okay. So my friend Pete calls this the disconnection exploration. I like it. Uh, so let me let me say, let me share what he had to say about this. Pete is some extraordinary psychic abilities. And so I shared with him that I felt my dog Stella was the, in the process of, of visiting the other realm. He explained it so beautifully. This is from Pete. As you are aware, our kids and animals grow and expand their consciousness and understanding in direct consequence of being near us. It can't be helped. As I read your lines about Stella, I felt a stretched cord, a bungee cord under pressure, which my work signifies disconnection exploration. Unless I'm missing something, nothing felt imminent, and he's right, Stella's still, still around, but I would lean towards the thought that Stella is exploring what it would mean to her and everyone else when she does pass. You did exactly as you should with telling her it was okay. When I had a sense that Dewey, our last basset hound, was considering the possibilities of transitioning. I told him something to the effect that, Dewey, I can't imagine how frustrating it must feel for, to be wearing a diaper or not being able to get up on the couch or run around with Val, his other dog, anymore. When you feel you have accomplished all you need to do here, I want you to know we will support your decision to leave the physical. We would never want you to be in pain or to be in the physical any longer than you would want or comfortable or feel fulfilled. My point is, he says, I'm a firm believer that our animals can explore the meaning of their death far more than we realize. I just love that he was allowed me to share this with you. Okay. so. Another point I want to make is that not all our animals are clear about what's up next. 
Unlike those animals who check out the other side, some of our animals may not be sure what's next. When they feel done, worn out, and they don't or can't find pleasure anymore in what they used to enjoy, they may welcome a release from their bodies when they understand there's another option. You know your animal. Ask yourself, what makes his or her life worth living? Is your animal finding no or little pleasure in activities that used to be fun? Is your animal eating? Other things to look for are incontinence, memory issues. Yes, animals have memory issues. Crying, yelping, or growling when you try to help move them. These are all signs that might be time to say goodbye. And I'm putting in here might because you, you make the final decision. It's more than just your animal being ready to go. It's also about you and your human family being ready to let the animal go. I think we, the guardians of our animals, should start with the intention to make decisions for the animal's highest goods within the limits of what we're able to provide logistically. There may be a limit to what we can afford for their care or whether we're capable of caring for them properly in the house. Maybe more importantly, we may find that our hearts can bear so much and no more. With that said, don't be hasty. There are many options a good vet veterinarian can recommend, and there are many additional therapies to explore. Get good advice, then let your heart and clear intention guide you. My dogs have always loved walks, cuddling, and good treats. In the mid-80s, when we were stationed in Hawaii, my husband and I adopted a poi dog off the streets that we named Missy. She was an incredibly active dog, and I loved running with her, in part because she would pull me along, you know? I wasn't doing all the work on the run. She dragged me up a steep, steep hill if I lagged behind. Her strength and, idea, I, and dynamic leadership was awesome. They were awesome. But in her final year, Missy couldn't move easily. She sat on the couch in our house in Virginia. And I had to hand feed her because she couldn't get up the stairs to her food bowl. I, I thought, oh, no, this is it. This is the end. But it wasn't. My vet provided good medications to manage what turned out to be a lot of pain. Missy perked right back up. And we gained a few more years. So I wanted to include that story so you think about, have you checked out all the options? Finally, consider the timing of their passing as part of their spiritual journey. If you allow the belief that animals might have a spiritual journey separate from yours, it might help you find peace. Um, just saying, the Buddhists believe that all sentient beings, which includes animals, have the ability to achieve enlightenment. So do I. So, I'm stopping because that's such a big one when I, when I thought about it. Yeah. And when, going back to um, what Pete was saying, how being around us, our animals are picking that up and they're growing just as our children are. Not that animals are our children, even though we love them like that. But there might be that ability, however you would frame it in your spiritual background. And why I'm saying this is when our animals disappear from our lives before we're ready, we're never ready, most likely. Our role is to continue to support them and provide love and guidance. That includes letting them go when the time is right or accepting that they left exactly when the time was right for them. In the story of their life, we may have a leading role, a chapter, a paragraph, or be mentioned in a footnote. Some folks get an animal um, and they they come to them because those are the people that they want to spend their last time with. And they're 
very important to them. But remember, it's so it's not solely about us. It's kind of humbling for me, but I want to remind you that your animal has their own path. Okay. Thank you for listening. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. And um, I'm going to continue to do this with other chapters. So keep looking for them. Bye now.